Hello guys, welcome back to the channel, Nigel here with you, Nigel's Modeling Bench. And now we are now with part 12 of this uh, mammoth build of this huge, great thing. So um, here we are, um, going together, lovely. Remember I've got some wheels on there and stuff now. So uh, it's really, really coming together well. If you remember at the end of part 11, which I filmed yesterday, we painted up our rotors. Now we've got the, um, the shading on there, as you can see. Again, the cameras make it look a lot more harsh than it actually is. It's just very, very subtle in real life. So um, basically, we need to get this unmasked. And I thought I'd do the unmasking on camera because I know that a lot of you like to see an unmasking. So we'll just spend a few minutes doing this first and then we'll carry on with the build. I'm going to get under here and peel this tape away here. And if it's all gone wrong, if it's all bled underneath and it's a right old mess and if it peels off, then you get to see it and then you know what not to do. Here we are, looking good at the moment, looking good for now. Let's try and get hold of that tape, there we go. So there's the first one, as you can see, lovely and clean, and just so much nicer than having decals on there. So much, so much nicer. And then here we have, this is where we might have a bit of a mess, let's see. On the inner end, so that can go there. Teacher's strike today, so we've got kids at home, I think. I can hear kids outside. I think that's what you can hear in the background. Generally, the kids around here are good as gold. The, the real noisy ones that you remember we had last year or the year before, they've gone now, thank God. Couldn't hear myself think sometimes. I remember... I remember somebody commented on one of, my, one of my videos, that has to be illegal. It was just so, so loud. Being careful here not to scratch the paint as well. And also being careful not to break anything. Because of course, masking tape can be quite strong. And when it oh, come off the tweezers, it's a pain. So we'll just peel that off of there. And so far, so good. So you can see that actually blowing away from the tape seems to work pretty well. We've got a little bit of a little bit of a bleed there, but luckily it's on the inside. This is the outside and it's, it's looking quite good, actually. In fact, on the reference pictures I've got from Prime Portal, the edge does actually look quite soft. It's not like a real sharp line. And this one, we've got the little piece coming off first. Here we go, let's get that off of there. Come on. Right. So there we go, we can see how that's gonna look. We'll just do one more, get off tape. We'll do one more on the end here. Yeah, this is Tamiya masking tape I've used. If you wanna get Tamiya masking tape, the best place for you to get it is from Premium Hobbies because if you use the code NMB10, you can get 10% off. Come on. This one will not come off. There we go. And this is one of the problems. This is why I'm taking it off, you see. The masking tape tends to go into super sticky mode and it will just absolutely weld itself in and you won't get it off. And it will start peeling paint, it will start leaving glue deposits. So it's really best if you can to get the masking tape off in sort of 24 hours if you can. Sometimes obviously like window masks and stuff where you put them on for paint and then weathering and then clear coat and all that you can't. But uh, when it's on top of paint and stuff like this you need to try and um, get it off in 24, 48 hours. But there we go. You can see how that's looking. So uh, really, really pleased. Oh, we'll just have a quick look as well. Um... Sorry if this is boring you to death, just fast forward, guys. I know a lot of people like to see this kind of thing. Little tiny bits of tape everywhere. What have I done here? Why have I done that? There we go. Uh, where are we going now? I 
there's a van outside, so I think Jess is about to start barking. If you're wondering about Jess, she's doing great. Obviously, the cancer is going to return at some point. But at the moment, after her operation, she's like a... She's a lot happier now than she has been for the last, I'd say, two or three years. So maybe that thing was coming on really slowly. I don't know. But, um, if it came on that slowly, let's just hope it takes that long to come back. So we just take each day as it comes and we thank God for every day we get. And that's all we can do, really. As some of you will know, it's hit me for six. And thanks to you guys keeping in contact, it's like I know there's a world out there that's, uh, that's thinking about me. And there are a few people out there that I won't mention any names, but have got some issues in their lives at the moment. You know who you are. And I'm thinking about you. And I feel sorry for you. And I realise that my issues are nothing compared to yours so uh, yeah so there we are so because I've got a bit of red over spray into there where I've had a gap you see some red paint in there but I can easily brush that in it'll probably disappear with oil wash anyway but uh, you see there with masking and painting we can get it and I just think it's so much better than decals it's so much better so that's that one, and then these, this shouldn't take too long to do, we'll see how these look. This really doesn't want to come off. Again. Oh, come on. There we go. You can see that get off get off you can see that that is just a million times better than a decal it's painted on it's you know it's as it would be on the real thing and the same going back here now this is trouble the, when you overlap these ends and pinch them together you got the masking tape really does weld itself together you've got to try and separate it i don't want to scratch the paint i've got to be careful here I guess one thing I could do is come in down here and cut the tape so that when I peel it, it will come apart. God, blimey. What I should have done was put, folded the end over or had the different lengths on the ends. But this does, there we go. As you can see, I mean, this has to be painted anyway, you can't use decals there. But, um, There's that one, there's a hair, there we go, so you can see, go away hair, go away, Jess hair, there we go, so you can see there, a lot nicer than putting decals on, it's just worth the time worth the extra time to mask it and everything and then when you weather you don't have the um there's hardly any step there at all i'll probably give these a flat coat a clear coat and then give them a quick sand over but you don't have any carrier film for washes to pick up on you know you can chip it this and you can chip decals but it's just going to be so much nicer than having um having decals on there so there we go i'll get the rest of this done and then i'll come back and show you how they look so there we go as you can see all done and uh, if i get a straight edge Where's a straight edge? I'm going to push that on there. You can see they're all they're all very much in line. So happy with that. How that's come out. So um, and as you can see, this, as I keep saying, it's so much better than decals. And that there, I think that looks bloody great. Nice bit of brightness to go on there. And you can see when we when we take the actual tar hay itself. We fit that, we can see it's added a nice bit of sparkle and colour to it. So you can see it's, it's absolutely huge. You can see it on my hand there. It's massive. 
So yeah, very, very nice indeed. Now, back to modelling. There are some very, I'm, I'm not knocking this kit here at all guys, okay, uh, but there are some very strange design features on this kit that have got me flummoxed. The main one is when you, when you fit this rotor head, okay, now obviously you're not going to glue this in because you're going to have it turning, so you'll have a removable for display purposes and it's quite easy to put in, right, but instead of having this shaft a bit longer and going all the way down through they've put in the I can show you in the instructions obviously I've glued the part in I could show you on the other kit but I can't be bothered to get it out um, you can see this part here D4 instead of having a hole in there and having this going through they've got like a, a, a ridge around the outside a pimple in the middle so when you put it in you've got to pick up on that and it's you can see it's really difficult to find it it's got to be perfectly in place to find that dimple. So I'm tempted to get in there and drill it through. I wish I'd done it before I put it together. So my advice to you guys is, and I'm not sure what diameter that is inside there, but it's two mil. So my advice to you is get a two mil plastic rod, drill through the center of that there, drill through Where's my pointer? Drill through there, okay, a two millimeter hole, and add some plastic rod so that when you put it in, you can find it and then it'll drop in. I mean, you could put a point on the end of the plastic rod, whatever. But if they just made this longer and had a hole there, it would have been so much easier because, you know, I put it in there and found it, but now I cannot find it. It's, you can see, I'm trying to find the dimple and it's nigh on in pot there we go got it but it's it, when you all the rotor blades on there it's very difficult because it's all like ooh, ooh, yeah. so um yeah i think what i'll do is i'll try and do that I'll see if i can get down in there with something and drill a hole you know just to make sure i'm down the center but um very very strange very strange indeed i guess even if you had like a, a two mil hole and you drilled a three mil a two mil bar and you draw a three mil hole in there, it would be better because it'll find, I mean, it sits on here anyway. It doesn't need to sit on the base. Um, but yeah, got it there. You hear it sort of go in. It's, it's just awkward. It's just awkward, awkward, awkward. And the other area that's really weird is in the wheels. Um, let me look at the wheels back here. Putting the wheel halves together, you can see this one here has got a hole in it, which is this side. And then this one here has got a tiny little hole in it. And on the end of the undercarriage leg, well, these are the aftermarket ones. See that tiny little pip on there? There's a tiny pip on the end of there, you can see. That's what goes in. So when you put the wheel on, like this... Okay, it goes into a slot to align the brake caliper. When you put the wheel on, it's got this, you know, there it's out, and then literally there it's in. It's it's just, I don't know why they've done it. Why didn't they just have the hole the same size as the axle and keep the axle straight so you had a, a positive location and then put a ring around so, so it had something located. It's very strange indeed. Um, I don't really know why they've gone around it that way. Very, very funny. But anyway, um, it's stuff that's easy to modify. And what I would suggest when you do your kit, in fact, I've got spare wheel parts in here. I would recommend when you do your kit, you can see here we have a, there's a tiny hole in there. And you've, you've got the axle going in, but I would suggest fitting a piece of tubing I mean, that axle is, what's the diameter of that axle? Um, it's 2.6, 2.7 millimetres. So piece of tubing, piece of rod, drill it out, whatever. Glue it in there so you get a much better location on the wheel. Because as that is now, you can see, oh, I can't put it in there. But as that is now, 
Let's just get that off the sprue. Yep, I broke it off the sprue, I know, but hey. You know, as that is now, it's it's got this tiny little location and it's just not enough. It needs to be, there needs to be more there. So build that up, give yourself a better location. That's what I'd thoroughly recommend. In fact, I might even do that and show you how to do it. Um, and then that's about it, I think, for now. But uh, it does seem, there's a few little oddities um, about the kit. But, uh, you know, it all goes together fine and it all fits. It's, it's absolutely fine, but it just would have been a lot better, I think, if they'd gone with the, you know, here with the simpler option. I mean, maybe they've got it sitting on that face there. Can't find it now. Find it. I'm not sure if that's it or not, but um, I don't think it is. But maybe maybe they've got it sitting on that face so that it doesn't actually sit on this face. I don't know. But yeah, you can see where it's been rubbing on there, so it does actually sit on there. But uh, yeah, it's strange, strange. Anyway, enough moaning, enough whinging. Uh, let's get on and get something else done. Okay, so here's my tip for making everything better. Here's a plastic leg, uh, which is standard kit leg. I've just got a bit of sprue out of my spares box. Cut up, I've drilled a hole in it and then opened it up with a knife about 2.7. I didn't have a 2.7 drill. So you can see in there we've got that very, very sort of scant location that goes in there. and It's not very good. So what we're going to do is just drop that in there. Okay, I'm going to grab some extra thin quick setting. We'll get it roughly centered. Make sure it's on the right side because one side has got a big angle on it. Drop a cement in there, get it roughly centered. There we go, that's roughly there. I'll just put that leg in. Make sure it lines up nice. It's stuck to the leg, which is great. Thank you very much. I did actually make one which actually filled up from there to there and then I dropped it and I cannot find it anywhere it's gone so uh, that's that um, so I'm going to give that a couple of minutes to dry and then we'll put this leg in I should be able to I just want to make sure it's all centered that's all It's a tight fit and the glue isn't curing. Come on. I'll let this dry and I'll come. All right, so that's got it. I've put some super glue around it just for speed. Um, so you can see that fits in there now and it locates in there centrally. So what we've got now, we can put the wheel together. Just quickly glue the wheel together with some quick setting. Obviously this won't be used, this wheel. There we go. we are just wipe that clean we don't worry about cleaning the seam up but we can see now that we've got a wheel together and it looks exactly the same as the other one there's another one which is painted and as you can see when I put this one on the axle okay it's very positive if I move it out just a touch you know it's it's literally the last sort of half a millimeter that it locates whereas with this one put it in like that and you can see it's solid and even if I pull it out it's still pretty solid so that's my recommendation to get your your wheels a lot better um, I wish I thought of that before so that's just a little tip if you haven't built yours yet and you're if, if you're getting aftermarket wheels and obviously it doesn't matter but um if you're using the kit wheels like I have because this is an out-of-the-box build basically pretty much um, then that's my advice piece of sprue, drill a 2.7 mil hole in it, glue it to the inside of the wheel and it will give you better location on the end of that leg. There we go. Okay then guys, I have attempted to drill that down the centre there and I've made a right mess down there so um, make sure you do that before you actually assemble the parts together. The, the trouble is you're trying to drill it and you've got like a, a ring and a pointed dome in the middle and you're trying to drill down through the dome and the drill just keeps sliding off so I've ended up with two holes either side now. So great but um, yeah, it's, uh, it's something that's well worth doing because you can't, it's very, very difficult to find 
there we go you know it's it's pretty easy with this but once the blades are on there as i say it's all like you know and it, it's just very very difficult to find that center so um basically going to fit the apu now so we've got the three little legs down here uh, i was going to put a wash on it first but i'll put a wash on afterwards i'm just going to put a drop of the quick setting in here because there's a little shaft i can only think this is the uh, shaft that powers a alternator generator whatever so that's just going to go on the back of there like that and then this is going to stick into here now this is going to be non impossible to show you but what i'm going to do is get some ordinary tammy extra thin i may need to do some touch up on here we've got hairs everywhere jess is going to the groomers today so things should improve drop of cement in there just to hold it and a drop in that hole there so it's been, it's it's just this model is a nightmare to hold i've just managed to put my fingers underneath and break the winch it's um it's very difficult to hold that shaft needs to be straightened up a bit so i can get it in I'm going to have to do this off camera guys, I cannot see what I'm doing. It's, I'm trying to do it so you can see, but it's impossible because I can't see a thing. That's better. Oh, come on. It's probably would have been better, it's easier to do before the radiator went in. There we are. <clears throat> so that's gone down there. Just give that a little shove. That drive shaft's not in there, is it? Oh, bloody thing. I think this drive shaft's actually too long. Oh, just go in the bloody hole, come on. Oh dear, dear, dear. Hopefully there's enough to hold it in there. The glue's probably dried out. So now we're going to put this exhaust on. I think this is going to be fun as well. So we'll put some glue in there. In fact, what I will do is just scrape. Scrape some paint from there. Scrape some paint from there. This is going to be fun. Here we go. That's gone on. That's gone on easily, actually. A lot easier than I thought it would. So we're coming from underneath with some glue. We'll try not to damage the, the metallic paint. I'm going to put some glue underneath here in the bottom. Oh dear, 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 dear. What a job. Right. So once that's had a wash and everything is in some matte black paint in there, it's going to look great. This is all very simplified, guys. There's lots of cables and pipes you could add if you want to really go to town. I'm sure Marco Liebich will. And... Uh, Go and have a look at that one on Facebook. It's far better than my build, I can assure you. Right. So, what's going to be next? Right, moving on. Um, <clears throat> I've put a wash on here now so you can see that. Motor heads looking nice. And I've also put a wash over all the blades. I used Muddler's World Industries of Dirt. And then just went over the cotton bud and just wiped it off in a direction of flow. So you can see we've got the panel lines highlighted. And it's all looking good. Okay, so there, that's ready for uh, for a varnish now. So, um, if you remember, 
I don't know if it was part 9, 10 or 11, I suggested what you do is keep these old masking sheets. And lo and behold, they've come in really, really handy because I want to do this version here from 1969. I love the year 1969. I don't know why I always have done. Probably the song or something. Um, so basically I want to do this one, which is the 101st Airborne uh, Vietnam 1969. And you'll notice that this has got um, black doors. These do the, I wish they'd give us bigger colour callouts because it's very difficult to see where all this goes. But they've got black doors and a black patch on the back here. Um, so I basically have masked off those doors using the remnants of these sheets. So you can see we've got the lovely radii to go around the door. You can see here the doors unmasked on this side. You can see what they look like. You've got the radius around the corners. So basically that is what I'm doing. And then what I'm hoping to do is when I sprayed this side, I'm hoping I can remove them as one and then put them on the other side. So um, at least I can use the corners anyway. So uh, that's the plan. So I'm going to give that a very light going over now with a, um, I'll probably use rubber black so that it's not too obvious. Um, or I may actually use black and then sort of just go around rubber black in the centre or something. But uh, yeah, really pleased how that's come out and well worth doing. So uh, yeah, really, really good. What I actually used on here is the, you've got the interior masks for these windows here. All these windows around the sides and everything. These here. So um, I was able to use those because I didn't use them on the inside because by the time I got the mask it was too late. But uh, there we go. So um, I'm going to go on and get those sprayed black now and then uh, come back and see how it looks and we'll get masks removed. Right then, there we go. There's the other side all done and there's the other side, the side you saw first masked up. And what I've done is basically gone round with Mr. Surfacer Black and then just fogged in some LP65 rubber black just to kind of give it a bit of a, a bit of variation so it's not just black. I don't know why those doors are painted black. And also they've got this rectangle on the back here, which is painted black. So we can remove this, these big areas of protective tape that saves all the overspray. And then with tweezers, we can get in without scratching anything. Remove these. And the way I do this, I think I've said this before in part nine or 10, what you do, whenever you've got anything masked like this, if it's got rivets or uneven detail or whatever, if you go flooding the paint on, paint on it guaranteed to capillary under the tape. So what you do is you just spray very, very lightly and just very, very lightly build it up. Don't flood it. Don't even let it get wet. You just want it to be really dry. And then you get that really nice sharp edge, even though, as you can see there, the tape has been on the rivets. So, um, that's how I do that. We just got that bit there to come off that side, the rest will come off itself. So there we go, we've got the same on that side there with no bleed. And then here we can remove these big bits here. This can all come off. I believe we've got to paint that antenna black as well, which is annoying because I've just cleaned the airbrush. I could always brush paint that, I suppose. But, um, so this is like I was saying, I, I think it's uh, it was just an idea I had while I was doing the masking. I've never done it before, never thought of it before. But, um, obviously it's worth doing. Save those old masking sheets because there's going to be stuff on there that you can use. So there we go, there's those doors done. And as you can see the radio nice and tight and everything's Hunky dory, got a little bit of a mismatch there. I can just brush that in. But uh, other than that, they're looking really nice. So, happy now that's come out. So, what are we going to do next? I think we're getting to the point where we're going to start bolting the engines on because uh, there's not really much else to do. Of course, just been thinking what can we do next? The next thing we can do is look at where we've got decals going and get some gloss coat down. The reason I want to do that, I know we've got a bit of a sheen to this paint. Spray that again, Nigel. I know we've got a bit of a sheen to this paint, but I don't want to risk silvering. So I'm going to put gloss down and that will give us a little bit more assurance that we won't get any silvering. So I'm going to gloss this area back here. I'm going to gloss this area here. As I say, you can see these, I mean, you can hardly see them on the camera, but the decal call-outs are absolutely tiny, but a tiny little one there. 
So what I'm going to do is go around and gloss where all the decals go and then we can look at getting the decals on later and then we could give the whole thing a coat of um, flat semi-gloss varnish or whatever and uh, sort of blend it all in. Obviously I don't want to be varnishing up here yet. Um, in fact, yes I do, sorry, yeah, I want, to, I want to get varnish on there because I want it to all match underneath and then what we'll do is get the wash on at the end of the day. So we'll probably give the whole thing a coat of uh, probably Tamiya LP23 flat clear. So, um, because that doesn't go dead flat, it leaves a little bit of a sheen, it makes it look a bit more accurate. Um, I don't think it would have been absolutely dead flat. We shall see. And also I want to make sure I don't get that covered in flat, so we'll have to sort of cover that up somehow. Anyway, um, I'm going to get some gloss coat down on here. I should probably use Aqua Gloss because it's my favourite and then we'll go from there. Okay, so when I left you yesterday, I was going to put some clear coat on and I've basically, you can see, I've put gloss clear coat here, here, everywhere this decal's going to go and then what we'll do, we'll get decals on and give it a complete coat of matte. So, um, we have this decal guide here which I've already said is absolutely bloody tiny. So we're going to get our decals out. Now I'm going to do a major one first to see how they go. Um, so I'm going to put this one in here, 18426 in the top. So in fact, now let's do a small one first to see how they go. So we've got this uh, this one here, which is number six up on the, the tail there, which is the eagle's head. So that one is six. So we're going to have the eagle facing forward on both sides. So we'll take this out. No, I'm using scissors. Don't ever use a knife to cut out decals because what happens, you, I've, I've said this many times before, um, you end up, when you cut with a knife, it's almost like ploughing a field and you push a line up either side. Um, and if you're cutting very, very close to the edge of a decal, then it can cause the, the decal to have like a hard edge to it. You don't want that. Um, and something I saw the other day in another video was uh, they were talking about um, it also puts when you cut the paper with a knife, it makes a de de decal hard to slide off. And I'd never thought of it like that. So, uh, yeah, it was a good point. So, um, yeah, never use never use a knife to cut out your decals. Always use scissors. And this is the way I do my decals. I just put a drop of water down there and I'm going to place that in there. And then I'm going to place that one in there. And let them just. Soak up the moisture and give them a few minutes to go off. I always use Micro Sole and Micro Set. So I've got my Premium Hobbies holder here for my Set and Sole. So micro Set, Micro Sole. Um, and I have a brush dedicated to only doing Set and Sole. So what we can do is come along here and where is it going? It's like halfway up the tail. So sort of in this area here. Everywhere we go on this model, we're gonna have raised rivets to deal with. Um, yeah, it's about halfway up the tail. So it's gonna be this one here because we'll have the eagle facing forward and it's, it's not sliding yet, it's not ready to go. I don't recall ever using ICM decals before. I did on that, oh, I did on that um, World War I ambulance, didn't I? So, I think they were very good. So let's see how they go down. I'm hoping they're going to pull down nicely onto the um, onto this raised rivet area. So I'm going to put it around about here. So I get some more set on there. And what we're going to have to do is just slide the decal off onto the model. There we go. And then we'll get it positioned. It'll come down a bit lower than that. We're going to try and get it kind of square. So it's parallel to the ground. And get it sort of central. That's about it. And then we can just come here, get a cotton bud, and just roll the cotton bud over. Just 
just like so. And I've got this tool here that I got from Premium Hobbies. And this will allow me to really, really push the decal down. There we go. I've just broken something. Shit. This model is so fragile. It has so many little bits and pieces sticking out everywhere. So there we go. So if I get this box back and put that on there like that, that's going to be the easiest way to do it. Just want to roll this deck and push it over these rivet heads, make sure it's gone down. And there we go. So that's good. And then, as per the instructions, we'll get some more micro set, brush that over the top. And then, once that's dried out, we'll put some micro sole on there, and that should really, really help to pull it down. So, some more micro set on this side, and I'll get the other side done. Okay, we're done. Got all the decals on. Um, <clears throat> the decals, be warned, are extremely thin. Uh, they And I think what doesn't help is the raised rivets. As soon as you put them down, they don't really want to move around very easily. So be very, very careful. You will notice here I've got 18420. And on the other side I have 18426. 18426 is the correct number. Uh, 18420 is the number for the 1968 version. Um, not going to worry about it because this model is out of the box and not 100% accurate without all the wiring and everything anyway. But um, yeah, the 18426, where is it? It's, there's bits of it here. It just literally, I tried to move it and it just fell apart. Um, so I've used the 18420. I may actually manipulate it to make that into a 6. We shall see. But um, basically, yeah... Uh, they th these were okay because they're not over any rivets they sort of slid around into position beautifully but all of the others like you can see this one here it's kind of almost like it's wrinkled up um and it won't flatten out it's very very strange indeed but uh they've gone down they've gone down beautifully they've pulled down lovely over the rivets um but as you can see like this one here this little piece just broken out of the bottom of it it's, they're very, very thin. Um, they're actually very, very nice. But I think it's because of the rivets. They just don't want to slide around it. Very, very difficult. I nearly messed this one up because um, I had it too far back and I tried to pull it forward and it just would not go. In the end, I managed to get it to go. But, um, you know, you know, normally if you use tweezers or something like I do to sort of position your decals and stuff, it just rips straight through it. It's, they're so, so thin. So be very, very careful. Um, Hopefully somebody will come up with aftermarket decals so you'll have sort of the option to not use them in case you do mess them up like I have. But um, there we go. So that's that done. Uh, and that, that's it really. There are some additional decals here on the sheet which aren't called for in the instructions. And these are actually for your helicopter, for your main rotor blades. And these are the serial numbers. Unfortunately, all the numbers are the same. So each blade has got the same serial number. And these actually go on the underside of the blade. Uh, so they're going to go like that. Okay, so they're going to go on the underside of the blade, reading outwards with the, the, the letters towards the training edge, or the top of the letters towards the training edge. And they're going to go about there. Okay, so that's how they go. They're not called for in the instructions. I'll have to gloss coat these. Um, because I don't think they're going to go down very well over the matte paint. So, <clears throat> there we go. So we're going to let those dry now for a while, and then I'll give it all a flat coat. I think in the meantime, I might start getting some greeblies on here. Um, I was thinking I'd put the engines on next, but I'm going to leave that till last, uh, because it's basically just going to be placing parts on. We don't need to handle it. This is a good place to pick it up as well. So the engines not being in the way is a good thing. Be very careful when your fingers, because you push on the winch, it will break off. Uh, ask me how I know it just breaks in seconds um, so there we go right um, I'm gonna let that dry now and then think about what we're gonna do next and there we go so decals are on flat coat is on and we can see we've got nice sort of um, I need to put some more matte coat on there actually because I can just see around here I can just see a bit of machine I fitted these little tiny antenna on the sides you can see there's like a, it looks like a step there or something 
So uh, yeah, I fitted all that. Um, so now comes the time where we've got to start really thinking about making this thing unpick up a ball. <laughs> so what I'm going to do first of all is fit the cranes. Now as per the instructions, as I told you before, they all have their own position. So not cranes, sorry, winches. These winches in here. And there's four of them. And then they have support rods, which are all on here. These are the four support rods. So they're just going to fit on the sides here and here. And then they'll have the support rods going back to uh, to um, support them. So um, I'll get those on and then I'll come back. We're going to have to paint those hooks as well. And also what I think of it, I've got the main winch hook here, which is probably going to be the last part to go on. That's got to be painted yellow. So um, we'll get that done as well. So uh, I'll get these on. Uh, maybe I'll film doing one of them because there may be some issues with it, whatever. And then uh, I'll get the rest on. OK, so when it comes to fitting these, uh, make sure there aren't any children in the room or people who are offended by bad language because <clears throat> I've just literally picked this up and just touched them and they fell off. It's like, oh, it's gonna, I'm, I'm, I'm wondering how many times I'm going to knock them off. I should have just left them to the end, shouldn't I? But anyway, it's, it's sort of, you can't just leave everything to the end because otherwise you're after 450 ends because all of this should be left to the end, which I'm doing, but where is the, you know, when does the end come? So with these cranes, or winches should I say, I'm just going to remove some paint from here, just to give a better bond. On the bottom here there's a pin, which I don't see any need for because there's no hole for it to go into. So I'm cutting that off and then sanding that flush. And then I'm going to come in with a pointy tool and just scrape some paint away from there, scrape some paint away from there. And that should help it all to go together. And then this here, we can make sure this goes the right way so that that angled piece is angled forward. And I can press that onto there. It will just snap on. Like so. So you can swivel it out. <clears throat> and then we can put this in place. And it may stay, may not. There we go, that's sort of wedged in there now. Make sure it goes into its correct location. I'm going to put a drop of glue on there. Oh, I did this on the front one, it fell out because obviously the glue kind of melted the paint and removed the friction. Let's just give that a nudge. And then this could come across. So bloody careful with this thing. I can imagine a lot of people will be building this kit and will launch it out the window halfway through because it does drive you around the bend. That's got to go into that hole in the centre and then us oh, popped out again. Oh come on, just go in there and bloody stay in there. You... Right, we've got a bit of glue on here just to lubricate, as it were, that joint. And stop it being so springy. And then we can push that in. So we'll put some cement down here, put some cement in there. And we should be able to pop that, whoops, don't want to go bending it. Pop that up into there. Make sure it's come back onto that arm. Drop a cement in there, drop a cement in there, drop a cement on there. There we go. So that's those in place. We've got to do the same on the other side. So as you can see, we're getting just inundated with stuff that we can't actually touch now we can't even oh so I'm going to get the others done and then I'll come back probably when I've got some of this on as well and there we go they're on as tricky as they were you may have seen me actually putting this this link into the center hole in there it doesn't it goes into the bottom hole um, you've got the I should have shown you at the time you've got in these parts here you have a bridge across the middle so you've got like three sections in there and in the bottom I'll show you this one actually it's a bigger picture where are we there we go you've got that it goes into that hole in the bottom so I put it in the middle it actually goes in the bottom so I just move them all out so they're all on um, that one I've managed to glue on on a slight angle when I glued the actual winch to the vertical member and I can straighten it out I'm sure but I'm so worried I'm gonna break something so I'm just gonna leave it as it is well, imagine it had a knock or something, or maybe they do swivel, I don't know. 
a tail. Yeah, I'm not going to change that now. We can be aware of it for the next one. And obviously, when I've glued that winch to there, I've got it on a slight angle. So same with that one. Look. So we just leave them as they are. This model's far from perfect anyway. So um, right, I'm going to go on and get all these bits and pieces on now. These are all the grab rails and steps that go up around the, the cockpit steps here, and then we've got the uh, the rear. Uh, tail skid there. We've got the wipers which won't go on until the masking comes off obviously. We've got some pitot tubes there. These are engine supports. Um, there's a step there which is going to be so flimsy it's just going to keep getting broken off. As you can see this is just uh, this is just heading for disaster here. But anyway I'm going to get them on and then I'll see you when I've done it. And there we go. <clears throat> there's all the handrails and steps and all that on there. You can see them all the way up there. It's just crazy 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 I've also fitted this skid at the back here I've realized that down here I have some hydraulics I'm gonna have to paint the shafts in on them with the silver um, and I've also fitted the support there for the uh, stabilator which is going to be extremely easily breakable um, but it's nice that it's all in scale so that's cool we also got this little thing on the front here whatever that is I guess that's some sort of antenna um, but yeah, <laughs> very, very uh, flimsy now. So um, it's just every single edge you look at, there's something this is going to be easily knocked off. So I now want to look at getting the engines fitted. So if I do this one on camera so you can see what's going on. So basically that is going to go, this end is going to go over that shaft there. And we've got this mount which is going to go into a hole there. And then we've got another piece be the shorter of the two which is that one another piece here which is going to go into that hole that I doubt if you can see it but there's a square hole here that that's going to go into and that's also going to lean forward wow that's going to be difficult to fit in there Kind of guessing it might be best to fit this to the engine and then when we put the engine in yeah that's going to be the way to do that okay so i'm going to put a drop of glue in there and then fit this to there hold it for a minute let it just tack ball there we go then I'm going to remove some paint from here just a little scratch like that and then we can offer the engine up like this I need to turn it around so I can see needs to come forward a touch so that's going to go into that hole there so that's going to stay in there and then we can put a drop of cement just touch and go on there And turn it back around and align the bottom of this support here I'm sorry if you can't see what I'm doing guys I will show you in a minute when I've done it there we go wow what a job That is as flimsy as anything. That engine is going to be easily broken off. So what I've just done is fitted this piece here to the engine. Then fitted the engine on and glued it there and then glued that mount there. And then I've positioned the bottom of that into a slot. You can see there's a slot here. 
but it's the same on this side so that just goes in like that so very very happy with that very nice indeed so I'll get the other one on and then I'll come back and we'll look at getting those big air filters on right so um, these air filters have got these bars in the middle that, um, that keep them separated not quite sure which way they go looks like it goes like that because we've got one small connector and one large and they don't fit in there but anyway they're going to go in between and the air filters are going to actually go in like this and they're going to go in between to um like sort of give them some support so I think what I'll do is I'll fix them to one of them but before I do that I'm going to have to come up with some way of picking up on this detail because in there is like an aluminium mesh um you know almost like a like a, a scrubber you know there's you get those scrubber pad things not like brillo pads but the more coarse ones um that's what it looks like inside there so I'm thinking maybe a floury light colored wash or something and then go around and remove it from the outside um and then maybe after I've done that, give it a black wash to highlight the edges. I don't know what quite what to do. So I'm going to go away and have a little think about it. Um, I also need to affix this tail plane. And that is going to be the absolute last thing I do. I think I keep saying the last thing. There's a million lasts, isn't there? Uh, because that is going to be so, so flimsy. Um, whoops. It's the radiator. I keep doing that. I keep turning it over with the radiators attached. I've got to be so careful not to break any antenna off. But you can see that that's going to go into there like that. And then we've got this, this hole here. And that's basically what is going to support the stabilator. So, yeah, it's going to be extremely flimsy. So that can go on last. And then when it's on there, we'll get it flat coated. Um... So what I'm going to do, I am going to do another video, but it's going to be, the next one's going to be a short one. And it's going to be all about getting the rotor head finished off with the blades in it. Getting the air filters on after I've done, I'll tell you what I've done with the wash. I may even include some of it in there. And um, we'll look at getting it all, it'll all be finished up and clear coated. And then we'll get the masks off, get the wipers on, and then she will be done, finished. I think that's my third finish this year. But, uh, Obviously, with the things with Jess and everything, it's knocked me back a bit. Um, and I know you all want to see me do the Lancaster and the Airfix Spitfire, but I just don't have any enthusiasm for the wet at all. So if I work on them, I won't be doing my best job. So I'm not going to work on them until I'm ready for it. I'm sorry if that's what you're waiting for, but that's the way it is. Um, I'm not going to work on something if I don't want to, especially if it's, I don't want to because I don't feel like, you know, don't feel up to it. So, uh, I just need something that interests me, that sparks my interest and takes my mind off of things. And that's, uh, that's where we are, I'm afraid. So, um, oh, and of course, we've got these little lights to go in as well. We've got one underneath and we've got one on the back, the navigation lights, the red ones. So, uh, I will see you all soon for part 13 and that will be it. 13 will be the final one, I promise you. And I keep saying it. Uh, it will be so I'll see you all for part 13 thank you for watching and bye for now